Hello and welcome. You're watching the news. I'm Gargi Rawat. Coming up ahead, the Prime Minister is in Kerala. He's uh, currently conducting a roadshow in Cochin as part of his big South push. Also, the centre issues several orders for airlines and airports in dealing uh, with flight cancellations and easing the flight of passengers. All that and more coming up ahead. Let's take a look at the headlines. The Prime Minister's Mission South on a two-day visit to Kerala where he will announce several projects, also meet with the party cadre. Earlier, he offered prayers in the Virbhadra Temple in Andhra Pradesh. Rahul Gandhi says the Ram Temple Pran Pratishtha ceremony on the 22nd is a political event designed by the RSS and BJP to centre around the Prime Minister. Even religious authorities are saying the same. The BJP hits back, says Rahul lives in a Lala world. The government announces new rules over flight delays, war rooms at six metro airports. The aviation ministry also issues notices to Indigo and the Mumbai airport after passengers were seen sitting and eating on the tarmac. The Supreme Court stays the Allahabad High Court's order on the survey at the Shahi Eidgah Mosque adjoining the Krishna Janbhumi Temple in Mathura calls the direction vague. A 10th Cheeta Shorya has died at the Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh. The cause of death will only be known after the post-mortem, say officials. But it's another big setback for the ambitious Cheeta project. All right, let's get started. The Prime Minister's Mission South. In less than two weeks, Prime Minister Modi is back in Kerala, where he will not just be inaugurating projects worth over 4,000 crore, but also holding meetings with booth-level workers in a, with an aim to strengthen the BJP's cadre to break its jinx in the state. There you can see the Prime Minister on a roadshow uh, as he arrived in Kochi a short while ago. And now this roadshow is taking place. Uh, let's go across to Pratibha for more. Pratibha, tell us about the Prime Minister's program over the next two days and we can see once again uh, as has become part of every road show the Prime Minister does, the streets are lined with people. Well, in fact, uh, right at this particular roadshow, as soon as uh, Prime Minister Modi embarked on one, uh, as he landed in Kerala, I have with me some of the fans of uh, Prime Minister Modi who had been waiting for an hour to catch a glimpse of their favourite uh, Prime Minister. Yes. Yeah. And how has the experience it been? Was very, very exciting yeah. to see the person in real. Is uh, you know, it was a dream of us, like to see him in person, and we are very happy about that. And uh, I have a little fan, so people from all walks of life, I guess. So, how excited are you? Very excited. Yeah. And uh, will you? Will this be your unforgettable experience? Yes, of course. Yeah. How long had you been wanting to meet the prime minister? Uh, so long. Yeah. <laughs> so I have with me another person here. So yeah, yeah. Uh, you had been waiting here for about an hour, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, you feel it's going to be—it's yeah, all yeah. worth it. Yeah, excellent. Because uh, one of the greatest person in the world, other than anything, and dedicated to the world, dedicated to the India, everybody. It's—it's uh, uh, it's like uh, seeing Sri Ramchandra Murthy. Same feeling. I had been to Ayodhya. The same feeling I had. Uh, I that uh, full. I mean, happiness. I got it by seeing. Because well, in fact, uh, that has been one of the significant statements because we have seen Prime Minister Modi, uh, who uh, who has been uh, looking at the Ram Mandir inauguration as one of the defining moments for the BJP as well. Six days ahead for the Ram Mandir inauguration, and we saw Prime Minister Modi to, uh, today stepping into the Lipakshi Temple, and tomorrow he is headed to the Guruvayur Temple. He will also be attending the uh, wedding of uh, Suresh Gopi's daughter. Suresh Gopi is an actor, politician, and and uh, he's also touted to be the potential candidate for the Thissur Lok Sabha constituency for the BJP. The BJP is uh, uh, looking at a bottom-up approach as far as uh, Kerala is concerned. They are starting from down south and Kerala is one of the significant uh, places for uh, the BJP as well as uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi because this is one of the places where BJP is emerging as a third force, a third alternative to the left as well as uh, the Congress. Several factors that are working in favour of the BJP 
BJP. We saw how the BJP had won an assembly seat in 2016, but it was nullified in 2021. But this time, all eyes are on the Thrissur parliamentary constituency. Apart from that, they are also eyeing the Patanam Tita, which is the hotbed for the Shabrimala issue, as well as Thiruvananthapuram, where the BJP has emerged as runner-ups for uh, uh, quite a few terms there. So these are some of the aspects that the BJP is trying to look into and uh, trying to leave no stone unturned with the booth level workers meeting as well that's on the agenda as well as the inauguration of development projects. Gargi. All right. Thanks so much, Pratibha, for joining us with those details of the Prime Minister on the road show. This is a two-day visit to Kerala, as Pratibha was telling us. Uh, he, there's a, you know, a lot of plans ahead for the Prime Minister, who's on his second visit to Kerala in two weeks' time. And earlier t today, he was in Andhra Pradesh, where he offered prayers at the Virbhadra Temple in Lipakshi in Andhra. And this temple has a connection to the Ramayan. Here's a report. Verses from the Ranganatha Ramayana in Telugu played out as the Prime Minister visited the Veer Badra Temple at Lipakshi in Andhra Pradesh. It is part of his efforts to engulf the southern states ahead of the Ram Mandir consecration. Lipakshi is where the wounded bird Jatayu is fabled to have fallen after the battle. Aajkal to pura desh Ram Maya hai. राम जी की भक्ति में सराबोर है प्रभु राम गवर्नेंस के समाज जीवन में सुशासन के ऐसे प्रतीक हैं जो आपके संस्थान के लिए भी बहुत बड़ी प्रेरणा बन सकते हैं फ्रॉम देयर द प्राइम मिनिस्टर डिसेंडेड ऑन केरला एंड एम्बार्क ऑन अ मैसिव रोड शो इन कोची he will visit the Guru Vayu temple in Thrissur on Wednesday. With the principle of Sabka Sab, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Biswas, Sabka Prayas, taking everyone along. So uh, this is how he has integrated the nation, making the nation more powerful, no connected to each other, whether it is south to north, east to west, everyone is get connected. And that's why India is powerful now. This is Prime Minister's second visit to Kerala in just a fortnight. And Thrissur, where the party secured 28% vote share in 2019, has been a big focus for the BJP. While cashing in on the Shabrimala issue as well as other issues, the BJP has emerged as a third alternative to the left as well as the Congress in Kerala. The BJP did win one assembly seat in 2016 but brought it to a null in 2021. But this time, the BJP is eyeing the parliamentary constituency of Thrissur. The BJP is the third alternative to the left and the Congress in Kerala. While the party cashed in on the Sabrimala issue to make an entry in the assembly election with one seat in 2016, they brought it to null in 2021. This time, the BJP has set its eyes on the parliamentary constituency of Thrissur. Apart from the temple visits, the Prime Minister is set to launch development projects in the state as BJP hopes to script a southern story in Kerala in 2024. With Pratibha, Bureau Report, NDTV. Meanwhile, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi took a dig at the Prime Minister by saying that the Ram Temple Pran Pratishtha ceremony scheduled for the 22nd of January is a Narendra Modi function. He said even the foremost authorities in the Hindu religion have made it clear that it's a political event designed by the RSS and BJP around the Prime Minister and that makes it difficult for the Congress party to attend. The BJP was quick to hit back saying Rahul Gandhi lives in a lala world. All religions, all practices. Even the authorities, we are open to all religions, all practices. Even the authorities of the Hindu religion, the biggest authorities of the Hindu religion, have made their view public about what they think about the 22nd January function, that it is a political function. Right? So, it is difficult for us to go to a political function which is designed around the Prime Minister of India and designed around the RSS. Rahul Gandhi lives in this Lala world, in my opinion, where he thinks that everything that he says is predicated by nobody understanding the truth 
and that he can get away with these atrocious lies rahul gandhi jo bhi soche unke guru sam petroda ne bhi kuch aise tippani kiya tha 5 6 7 din pehle it is a deeply felt emotional issue for crores and hundreds of crores of indians rahul gandhi ka interpretation jo bhi rahe hamare liye ye ek bahut hi ek mahatvapurna aur bahut hi ek deeply felt aastha ka issue hai Well, as Ayodhya readies for the Ram Temple consecration ceremony on the 22nd, it spells a big boost for religious tourism, and the hotel industry is booming in anticipation. Oyo, the online hotel booking platform, is opening 400 new hotels, not only in Ayodhya but also in other spiritual and religious pilgrimage sites of the country. Himanshu reports. As construction of the Ram Temple continues. Hotels are being built as fast, so they are ready to accommodate the rush of devotees over the next few months. अच्छा है सर लोगों को रोजगार मिल रहा है, होटल बन रहा है, होटल बनना तो मेरे स्टाफ चाहिए, इसलिए रोजगार भी मिल रहा है, और जरूरी है और आने वाले टाइम में कंटिन्यू बुकिंग भी अच्छी होगी, और इससे हम लोगों को ही फायदा मिल रहा है। श्रद्धालु आ रहे हैं, उन्हें हर तरीके का मतलब बेनिफिट्स � Oyo is opening 400 new hotels not only in Ayodhya but also in other spiritual and religious pilgrimage sites of the country in the next few months. These pilgrimage sites include Ayodhya, Puri, Shirdi, Varanasi, Amritsar, Tirupati, Haridwar, Vaishnu Devi and Char Dham. The budget hotel chain feels a spiritual tourism has grown rapidly in the last few years. According to Oyo, in Ayodhya alone, search for rooms on their app has gone up 350 times. That is why Oyo has built 50 homestays in Ayodhya, which have about 1,000 rooms. I am doing dormitory. It is 200 rupees, 200 rupees. One person will sleep in the category. The tourism will come, right? It is not that the safari will come. The lobby will come. The poor man will come. It is not that the poor man will come. It is not that the poor man will come. Earlier, tourism did not have much connection with religion and spirituality. But in recent times, important centers of religion and spirituality have become people's choice for tourism. And this is the main reason why hotel platforms like Oyo are launching major hotel projects in important religious centers of the country. In Ayodhya with my colleague Pramod Shivastav and camera colleague Pawan Kumar, Himanshu Shekhar for NDTV. The Supreme Court today stated the Allahabad High Court's December 2023 order to appoint a commissioner for a court-monitored survey of the Shahi Eidgah adjoining Krishna Janbhumi Temple in Mathura. Uh, this is claimed as the birthplace of Krishna. Uh, terming the purpose of the appointment of a commissioner as vague, the bench said this is wrong. You have to be very clear uh, what you want him for. The Supreme Court has now listed uh, the next hearing in this matter on the 23rd of January. The Aviation Ministry has issued a six-point action plan today to combat the fog-induced disruptions which have resulted in the delay or cancellation of hundreds of flights and a barrage of criticism by flyers who have suffered delays of over 10 hours in some places. The Ministry also issued a notice to Indigo and the Mumbai airport after a video of beleaguered passengers sitting on the tarmac and eating went viral. Amid fog delays and chaos, fresh directives from the government. War rooms at six metro airports to help passengers, round-the-clock CISF manpower availability, incidents reporting thrice daily from metro airports. The government has opened another runway which can function within extreme low visibility. This has been done in order to ensure that flights can take off and land even in dense fog conditions. The fresh action from the government came hours after a show cause notice for both low-cost airline Indigo and the Mumbai airport over these bizarre scenes last night of passengers eating dinner on the tarmac near an Indigo flight after a 10-hour delay. In a strongly worded notice, the government said both Indigo and the Mumbai airport were not proactive and provided no facilities to stranded passengers. 
The fog situation in North India was slightly better today, but still led to over 83 flight cancellations at the Delhi airport. 469 flights at Delhi were delayed. Compared to the previous days, today the situation at the airport at least seems to be a lot more orderly. Most flights are now either boarding or the gates are open as compared to yesterday. So that also goes on to show that uh, the management today at the airport has been a lot better with Mohammad Mursaleen in Delhi, Ishadat Alahiri for NDTV. And some tragic news are from Madhya Pradesh. Another cheetah died in the Kuno National Park. This is the 10th such death since the introduction of the cheetahs in India in 2022. An official statement says the cause of death of the cheetah named Shorya uh, will be known after the post-mortem. It was, uh, he was one of the cheetahs from Namibia. Uh, so far, seven adults and three cubs have died at the National Park. Deaths that have been attributed to various infections. Uh, but another massive setback for the cheetah project, which aims to reintroduce the big cats in the wild in India. International news on Iran's powerful group, the IRGC, claims it has struck the Mossad headquarters in Iraq. This in retaliation for the recent assassinations of its commanders. Reports say that four civilians were killed in the strikes. Vishal with the details. Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps launched missiles early on Tuesday at what it claimed were Israeli spy headquarters in Iraq's Kurdish region. Iran claims to have hit targets allegedly linked to ISIS in northern Syria as well, saying it was defending its security and countering terrorism. Iran's powerful group, the IRGC, claims it has struck the Mossad headquarters in Iraq. The alleged Israeli spy headquarters lies in the Kurdistan region, which is autonomous. Reports suggest that the Mossad headquarters was located near the US consulate in the region. IRGC said the strikes are in retaliation for the recent assassinations of its commanders. And reports say that four civilians were killed in the strikes. On the other hand, ballistic missiles were fired on targets in Syria as well. These strikes were in response to attacks on Iranian civilians on January 3 that killed about 90 civilians. Reacting to the strikes, the US has hit out at Iran. US State Department has said in a statement that the US strongly condemns Iran's attacks in Erbil and has termed the attacks reckless. US also said that the Iran strikes undermine stability in the region. Iran has so far shied away from directly getting involved in the Israel-Hamas war, but these attacks could change the direction of the war if Israel decides to strike back at Iran in the same way. Signs of a thaw in the Congress, Amadmi Party ties. The Congress and AAP will be contesting the Chandigarh mayoral elections together. Will this lead to an alliance for the Lok Sabha polls as well? Here's a report. Hours after the Congress and the Amadmi Party announced their alliance for Chandigarh mayoral polls, could this Bonhomme be a sign of things to come for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections as well? Seat sharing part. Non-stop regular commentary करना उचित नहीं है मैंने पहले भी कहा था कि जैसे क्रिकेट मैच में आप देखते हैं कि बॉल बाय बॉल कमेंट्री होती है सीट शेयरिंग की बातचीत में संवाद में इस प्रकार से बॉल बाय बॉल कमेंट्री नहीं हो सकती वो संभव नहीं है लेकिन जैसे ही कोई महत्वपूर्ण फैसला लिया जाएगा उसकी जानकारी अवश्य आप सबसे साझा करेंगे वाइल बोथ पार्टीज आर होल्डिंग अ सीरीज ऑफ मीटिंग ऑन सीट शेयरिंग फॉर द लोकसभा इलेक्शन the real challenge is in Punjab, where the Aam Aadmi Party is in power, but Congress had won 8 of the 13 Lok Sabha seats in 2019. So what are the challenges? Congress leaders don't want to share Kada with Aam Aadmi Party, as they worry the Kada may shift to the Aam Aadmi Party. Aam Aadmi Party leaders see 2024 general election as an opportunity to increase their tally in Punjab at a time when the BJP and the Akali Dal are weak. सारे वीरे ते प्रामानु एक अलकमा के चंद महीनिया दे बेची आंधे दो टाइम महीनिया च पार्लिमेंट दिया इलेक्शन आनिया ने कुछ चीज चीज़ा जड़िया साढे वर्करा दे दिलो दुमाग चले वो सारिया गलासी दुविंदर यादव साब पिछले दिनी बहुत क्लेरिटी नाल बड़ी सफाई दे नाल उन्हनु दस्या के लांस अलाइंस बारे 
ਸਾਡਾ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਕੀ ਨਜ਼ਰੀਆ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ the alliance for chandigarh mayoral polls may come as a breather for both parties but with congress leaders continuing to attack the aam aadmi party government in punjab seat sharing talks for the lok sabha elections might be a completely different story with mohammad ghazali bureau report ndtv the adani group will offer eligible residents of dharavi slums new flats measuring 350 square feet which are 17% more and more space offered by any slum redevelopment project the adani group is redeveloping dharavi slums in collaboration with the maharashtra government puja bhardwaj reports tin roofs on plastered walls cramped rooms streets so narrow that people can barely pass each other asia's largest slum dharavi has been waiting for change for decades and now that change is coming in the largest urban development plan in the world The Adani group announced yesterday that each eligible resident in this slum will now get a 350 square foot house more than the proposed size of 269. This is the largest carpet area offered by any developer so far for this project. Sheikh Ansari has spent his whole life in this 6x8 room with a family of 6. Jab yahan soonga yahan tak ye rakhunga to mere main lamba hu na to mere pair na to deewar pe lagte hain fir usko teede karke sona padta hai. Housewives became emotional when they heard the news. Bachche bade ho gaye. Ye sochi thi kabhi to ye jhopde se chutti milega kabhi to ghar milega kabhi to police wahan se lenge. Floors have been built haphazardly. Factories on top of homes. As people from all parts of India live together amid the filth. Bathroom mein aur gutter ka jo gandagi hai, itna barabar pass ne pass nahi hota hai aur jo PMC wala aata hai karta hai, lekin utna nahi saaf kar pata hai jo unko bhi takleef ho rahi hai. Bahut saal se dikkat mein hum log hain. बाथरूम की परेशानी है सवेरे बहुत लंबी कतार रहती है तो एक समझ लीजिए एक बाथरूम के चार चार लोगों का पहले से एक ही बीच में रहते हैं द धारवी रीडेवलपमेंट प्लान इज 20 इयर्स ओल्ड बट नेवर टुक ऑफ ऑन नवंबर 29 2022 द अदानी ग्रुप वन द बिड फॉर द स्लम रिहैबिलिटेशन प्रोजेक्ट स्प्रेड ओवर 259 हेक्टेयर्स it will be redeveloped in different phases people living in dharavi since january 1st 2000 will get free 17% larger permanent houses schools community halls hospitals daycare centers for children will also be built space for industrial units will also be increased for 5 years 7 lakh people who don't qualify for permanent houses will get houses on rent under the pm avas yojana The total timeline of this project is 17 years. ये redevelopment project हर redevelopment project से बहुत अलग है, ठीक है? यहाँ पे actually slum lords का power बहुत tight है. Mumbai is called the slum capital of India. They are right. 50% of the population is in uh, slums. उस पे से the biggest slum is Dharavi. Uh, if we do this, I think it will set the model कि बाकी slums को भी कैसे हम लोग handle कर सकते हैं. Over 10 lakh people live in more than 60,000 shanties here. Unorganized industries here do an annual business of about 10,000 crores. They have all been waiting for change, and now there's hope. With cameraman Rajendra Dayalkar and Praveen Rohit, Pooja Bhardwaj for NTV.